All right, I got a nice little 45 ballistics gel test for you here today. We got the Federal Punch and the Federal HST, both standard pressure, 230 grain. we shooting it out of my Ruger SR1911 there, five inch barrel. Knox 10% ballistics gelatin. There's a look at those. And if you can see the BB right there, I got two in there actually. Um, this furthest one is 3.7 inches, so we are within calibration. Maxible, maximum allowable is 3.74 inches, and we're coming in at 3.7 on that furthest one there. So we're in calibration. As always, temperature controlled. Comes straight out of my fridge, goes into that ice box there with ice. Those who don't know, HST is pretty much golden standard for federal. They recently came out with this punch line. It's supposed to be like a kind of a budget version of the HST. Um, for example, I think this was like 18, 19, or 20 dollars, whereas this was like 35. So these cost almost twice as much. So this is kind of like their budget version of it. The bullets look nearly identical, but I think there are slight differences. Obviously, you can see those are nickel plated cases, whereas those are just brass. I'll probably throw up a little insert here explaining the differences for you guys that want to know. In a nutshell, the punch has a simple soft lead core, whereas the HST has a harder preformed lead core, which also meets FBI uh, minimum standards for barrier penetration and th performance through like wood, glass, and steel and whatnot, whereas the punch does not. Federal themselves market the punch as a concealed carry load uh, for consumers that aren't concerned about uh, those barrier penetration requirements. But I have two blocks lined up here, so we'll have another behind it to make sure we get catches. We'll start out with bare block, and then we'll do four layers of denim as a worst case scenario test. All right, we'll fire the punch first, followed by the HST and the clear block, or bare block, I should say. And then when we throw the denim on, we'll follow the same order. Punch first, and then HST. We'll get penetration measurements, bullet retained weight, and expanded diameter. That was a bad shot, as you can see there. Just wanted to show it to you real quick before I take another. All right. Well, I keep averaging right there. I think my sights are off. I did recently replace that front sight, and to be honest, I have not completely zeroed it, so it must be shooting off the right. I'll come further left, and I'll go a little lower here. Hopefully we have a capture this time. It's getting ridiculous. Yeah, I was aiming like right here and it, so we're definitely off to the right there. But anyway, there's the entry. And this is so messed up now. That's why I wanted to show you that first shot just in case. We do have a capture back here, so that's good. There's that lined up for what it's worth. Sorry about that. I had no clue that that thing was off to the right, so. That's why I showed you that first shot, which I mean overall, you know, those uh, cavities are at least two inches wide there. There's our bullet. But uh, let me get a let me get a HST over here, hopefully save some room, and I'll try to take another after the HST to make sure we get a good HST shot. I'll try to take another with the punch down the center so we can see it better, provided that I don't screw up the HST shot. Man, what is going on today? We captured it, but holy crap. Look at that wound cavity. That's almost three inches. I'll get a measurement on that. It was getting dangerously close to the top here. I don't feel any openness there, so it just stopped right there. So that, I do believe that's just as good as if it was down in the gel. Let me see if I can get a uh, another punch through here, and then we'll take another lower uh, HST in this bare block here. All right, hopefully you can see that punch track now. Huh. That one did not perform nearly as good as that first one did over here. You can see how much more narrow that was, because even that first one over here, it tore up like at least two inches, and then, you know, the side split out. But there's that it came to about the same depth so 
We see how massive this is here. Let me get a measurement on that real quick before I screw up again. And uh, we'll put another HST down around here somewhere. Just to, uh, since that one came kind of high, just to double, tech, double check the penetration. Yeah, that thing is absolutely massive. Coming in at about two and five eighths there. From the edge of it there. A little harder to see down in there, but there's the edge. From what I'm seeing, the camera distorts it a little sometimes. Two and five eighths inches. All right, not as low as I wanted it, but it should be low enough to where we stayed in gel the entire time for the capture, which we did here. These were pushed together. It's just the impact pushed them apart. So it's right down there, right next to the other one. There was the entry. Let me flip this thing over. Kind of hard to see because of everything going on in here now, but I mean, that would have been it right there. All right, penetration depth on these. I find it kind of interesting that the punch are penetrating further than the HSTs. Maybe the HSTs have expanded to a wider diameter. That does look pretty gnarly. Of course, we'll get that by the end of the video. And again, that wound cavity there on that one was the most impressive. So, But we're coming in about 15 there on that punch. Maybe 15 and a quarter. That one's sitting at about 15. And then the HSTs. 13 and a quarter and 13 and 3 eighths for that one. All right, those things are gnarly. And so absolutely expanded larger and much larger. And these things are sharp. God, those will tear you up. Can't wait to see what they do through the denim. Hopefully they perform through the denim as well. So there's the first punch recovered. There's the first HST recovered, the one that was on top there. There's the second punch that was retained recovered and there's the second HST these things are just absolutely gnarly Jesus that's got to be like <laughs> that's got to be one of the best if not the best uh, 45 jacketed hollow points out there that is insane these things are going to come in over 70 caliber for sure but that's just a quick look let me get these spin around before the blocks get too hot get the denim on there get some shots fired in there and then we get the retained weight and measurements at the end. Ah, my luck today, man. Where are we at here? This thing will not zoom where I want it. Come on. Yeah, that thing's shooting high, right? I really got to get it zero today. Let me take another one. But as you can see... Well, that was the punch, but there's your wound channel there. We just didn't get a capture. It came out the top there. I was aiming here, and it's going high right on me like every shot. So I'm going to have to aim like over here and a little lower. All right. That time it went where I wanted. <laughs> yeah, I had to like aim over here. So there's that. And let's see where it went. We're back here. Now, just so you know, as it looks like it may have followed the path here. Obviously, it was clear there. The channel kind of disappears. You can kind of see it right there going into this one. But I can tell you from the many, many gel tests I've done and watched, um, going into an existing path like that, especially towards the end, it really doesn't change anything at all. Your penetration is going to be about the same. It still does a, a good job because that stuff seals back up. The results, if you shoot into an existing wound channel, are practically the same as if in as if, if you completely avoid it altogether. So, anyways, let me get the set back up and we'll do the HST now through the denim. Well, <laughs> what do we got here? All right, good shot. You can see there, oh, it's son of a, well, I'm glad we were pretty much done. You can see there, so we definitely have reduced performance to the denim as expected, but the punch, or excuse me, the HST is definitely leading, uh, leaving, God, I could not talk today, uh, larger wound channels here than the punch. All right, I got this thing rinsed stuff. freaking rocks everywhere. So the capture and the punch again, that was right there. Then our capture on the HST. 
right there. Again, the HST is shallower. Again, probably because it performed better, expanded larger. We got a larger wound cavity here. It seems to indicate that. So, let's see here. The HST is probably, again, larger. Definitely reduced performance through that denim, but still good performance. Oh, I should have measured those first, but we came in right there and then right here. Get a measurement in just a second. This is interesting. Oh, got them backwards. Huh. No, that can't be. What in the heck is going on here? I'm glad I was recorded pulling those out because, I mean, you guys saw it. But these somehow, I don't know, they must have crisscrossed down in here because this is clearly the HST. You can tell just by looking at it compared to, you know, our previous performance. And this is clearly the punch. You can see it doesn't even have the lead that's able to curl all the way down like the HST has there. But... <laughs> I don't know the blocks are set right so it's not like I flipped this or anything um, so yeah somehow I don't know they were going straight here and then they crisscrossed that's weird let me see if I can take two more hopefully this thing won't fall off again it's all slimy now because I rinsed it off and there's rocks all over the bottom but I mean that's clearly the HST that's clearly the punch and I didn't fire them backwards at least I don't think um, so that's why I'm going to do it again uh, but regardless at least on those two the HST this time went further, even though it was still a larger diameter. I don't know. That just doesn't really add up. So let me take one more of each. All right, I'm going to record that. That way there's no doubt in your guys' minds. So it's clearly the HST. You can tell by the nickel-coated case. So I'm going to put that in first. That way that will be our second shot. And then here's the punch. Clearly, brass case. Punch will go on top. Our first shot is punch. Second shot, HST. So, clearly, first shot here, punch. I wish I had noticed this before. The punch has a freaking P on the back. And yep, you can tell that's definitely the punch. So I don't know what the heck happened earlier, if I got them backwards maybe, or they switched down here, which I don't think that's very likely. I more likely got them backwards. And then uh, our punch is down here. You know, I never did get <laughs> freaking uh, penetration depths for you guys. Hang on. All right. I was right though, so most likely I just got them switched backwards in the firing order. 18 and a half, 18 and 5 eighths there on the punch through the denim our HST is right there I'll flip it over so you guys can see it better here in a second but it's sitting just sh blah, God see I cannot talk today today has not been a good day uh, just shy of 17 inches there on the punch this is gonna be difficult to do one-handed especially God all right flipped it over there is your I feel like I'm even misspeaking now. This is the HST. I feel like I just said punch. I can't remember though. But there's a clear difference between the HST there and the punch. Night and day difference. You can't get them mixed up. So either they crisscrossed on me on the previous two or I shot them in the wrong order. So here's our gorgeous set of bullets now. Okay. So. This was the first one through the uh, bear block. There was a second captures through the bear block. First captures through the denim. Second captures through the denim. So I'm pretty impressed by both these rounds actually. Obviously the HST is the winner here today. Unless you want you know extra penetration then maybe go with the punch. But geez these things are massive. And just the slight difference. Well maybe it's more than slight. We'll get a measurement here though. But not too much reduced performance through the denim but it made a massive difference on penetration um, that's that 230 grain huge chunk of lead there for you so even though there's this still through the denim is larger than what 90 percent of nine millimeter if not more will expand to through just bare block and they still penetrated uh, really far but that's because that 230 grain weight carrying it through there even though it's got all that surface area
So we get retained weight and measurement on the expanded diameter here, but I got to say, this kind of makes me a believer <laughs> at 45. Uh, the performance is ridiculous. You know, I've, I've tested plenty of 45 rounds that, yes, they penetrated a little further than like 9 millimeter, but the, like the wound cavity wasn't necessarily larger or much larger. But it just goes to show if you pick the right load, man, there is a huge difference here between 45 and 9 millimeter. Um, I just did a test where I did... Um, Federal HST and Spear Gold Dot, both plus P loads and 9mm. I'll put a link in the description for that if you want to go check that out, or you can just check out the 9mm gel test playlist. I got a 45 playlist for gel test 380, uh, and I got a bunch in the 22 slash rimfire playlist as well. Uh, but I was really impressed by the HST plus P performance in that 9mm video I just quoted. Um, some of the best 9mm ammunition I've ever seen. The wound cavities were massive. I got a measured 2 inch diameter, which is generally about the best I ever see from 9mm. But I typically don't see a whole lot better from 45 until today. Those wound cavities, at least from the HST, were massive. Definitely getting really good penetration. This thing is a huge diameter and these pedals are just ridiculously sharp and jagged so uh, this load definitely makes me a believer in a full full size 45 now there's a huge difference here but not all loads created equal like i said even this punch performed pretty well but the hst is definitely taking the cake today that's got to be one of the best if not the best load for a full size 45 there and these are just standard pressure too I meant to show this earlier but the velocities punch is advertised 890 feet per second again these are both 230 grains and 890 on the HST as well so you can see there's definitely a difference in uh, bullet design even though unfired they look identical All right, I switched sides so we could see the scale here a little better. The sun was hitting it from the other side where you couldn't really see it. So these are the ones through the clear, the bare block. These are the ones through the denim. I mean, they're all pretty much the same. Retained weight punch, bare block, 234. Remember, these are 230, so that's a little bit of... That extra weight is the gel trapped under those pedals there. Retained weight through the denim with the punch, 235.8. Again, same thing, trapped gel. Retained weight HST through the bare block, 233.8. So those certainly folded over and trapped some gel in there. Retained weight through the denim HST, 233.2. Again, there's some gel trapped up in there. So, looks like 100% weight retention regardless of bare block or denim. Wow, yeah, those HSTs are massive because even this punch here, this is the punch through the bare block, 75 caliber there, 0.752. So those things are going to be in like the 80s. Expanded diameter punch through the denim, 0 0.702, 70 caliber. And other than some exotic hybrid rounds or what have you, uh, I have never seen a 45 ACP expanded that large. 0 0.994, 99 caliber with that sucker. And that is through the bare block. And then through the denim, still 86 caliber, 0 0.860. Awesome. You guys want to get yourself one of these scales or the micrometer caliper there links in the description i have links for the ballistic gelatin as well target stand paper targets even my steel targets and more links in the description for that but there's our results for the day and i gotta say i could not be happier i know what i'm keeping loaded in this bad boy from now on now if you want to see a old crappy review of mine on this uh Ruger SR 1911 here i'll put a link in the description and don't forget i'm also putting a link in the description to that nine millimeter HST versus Spear Gold Dot plus P, uh, if you want to go check that out, the 9mm video comparing those two. Again, check out the 45 uh, gel test playlist if you want to see more 45 gel tests. I got one up for 40, 9mm, 380 as well. But thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, and I hope to catch you on the next one.